So what is a cumulative distribution function for random variables? And let's start with an example. So let's consider a uh, random variable, which is the angle of a spinning wheel when you grab it, just for an example. So let's say you had a wheel and it's spinning and you randomly grab it at a, at a time and you record the angle of the wheel when you grab it. And so uh, let's say the wheel is perfectly balanced and it's been going for a random amount of time, uh, then you could accurately uh, estimate the phase uh, to be with sort of infinite precision, then you would get a phase that's somewhere between zero and two pi, uh, and there would be an equal probability, that's supposed to be a flat line across there, there's an equal probability of getting any of those phases. So we're gonna call the phase uh, value theta. So this is the, uh, what I've drawn here, is the probability density function, the PDF, uh, for that theta angle. And if you want more information on a PDF and what is a PDF, then there's uh, information in the links below this video uh, to another video that gives a good description of the PDF. So here we have a uniform distribution for a random variable. So what is the cumulative distribution function? Well, it is, as the name implies, it accumulates the probabilities uh, so let's see what that means. I'm just going to intuitively draw it for this example, and then we'll give more mathematical details. So it's still uh, as a function of theta, the possible values that the random variable can take. And we're going to use a capital F for the CDF. This is the traditional uh, notation. So use a small f for, or sometimes a small p for the probability density function, the PDF, and use a capital for the CDF. Okay, so as with the others, this is a CDF of the random variable theta, or that's a capital theta that I've drawn there. Uh, and then the values it can take are theta, so that's what we're plotting it against. Okay, so as I said, it's the accumulation of the probability density. So as we move from left to right, uh, how much of that probability density have we accumulated? This is the intuitive way of thinking about it. So down here, for all negative values, there's no probability density. So this is also hasn't accumulated any probability density yet. And as we move to the right here, we start adding up the area under the probability density curve. So as we move to the right, we start getting a small amount of area, and the more that we move, the more area we get. And I think you can see, because this is flat, therefore this will be rising at a constant uh, slope until we get to 2 pi, uh, at which time uh, we don't, beyond that, as we increase theta, we're not in, uh, in adding any more density or probability in this example because it's zero. So therefore, uh, it stops rising and is flat. And of course, uh, we then will have accumulated all of the probability because we will have gone past this maximum point in this example of this uniform uh, distribution example. And so the height of this is one. So it starts at zero as we move from left to right. It starts at a height of zero and goes up to a height of one. And in this case, because it's flat uh, in the equally likely uniform PDF, therefore we get a constant slope in the CDF, which is the accumulation of the probability density. So let's put a bit more mathematics around that. Uh, F of x, uh, if, I, if this is for a theta angle theta, but let's more, have a more generic uh, label for random variable of x. So F of x equals, uh, and we can see it from here now that we've got it intuitively, it equals the probability that the random variable will have a value less than or equal to the x value that you're plotting it against. So when x is replaced by theta, uh, as you can see along here, this is now giving us the probability that you get a, the random variable have an outcome that is less than whatever value of theta it is you're looking at. So once we get to 2 pi, it has a probability of 1 that you are going to be getting an outcome less than 2 pi because all of the values are less than 2 pi. Uh, so that's, uh, that makes sense. So that, that gives us one of the properties. So this is the definition here. This is the, the definition. Uh, but let's list some properties here. So one property is that fx uh, of um, uh, negative infinity uh, equals zero. It always starts at zero. And fx of positive infinity equals one. 
Of course, it's also, uh, you know, naturally because of this, uh, is between uh, 0 and 1. So fx of x is always, is always between 0 and 1. Uh, another property is that it's non-decreasing. So we've seen that, or intuitively you can see that, uh, you can't, as you move from left to right, you are in adding up the extra bits of density to the left of where you are. So that means uh, you're never going to be decreasing. It might be that this PDF goes to zero and then rises up again. Of course, the total area has to equal one for a PDF. Uh, so if it goes to zero and then rises up again, then you would have a flat spot in your CDF and then it would rise up again. Uh, so it can be flat, but it's certainly not non-decreasing. And another uh, um, part of this or uh, result of this definition is that the probability that you land or that you get your random variable uh, bigger than x1 and less than or equal to x2, uh, so this is in a range, so the probability that you fall in a range equals the CDF evaluated at x2 minus the CDF evaluated at x1. So that's an important property that uh, we often use in probability calculations. Um, how does it relate? What's the actual formal relationship between these two? I've given this intu intuitive, and I think you, you can see, I've talked about it here from moving to the right and cumulative, like accumulating the density. Uh, also, of course, in reverse or the other direction, it's a derivative relationship. So the slope of this uh, gives you the height of the PDF. So f of x, uh, of x, so this is the PDF, uh, equals the derivative of the CDF uh, as a function of the value. Okay, so this is a relationship between the PDF, probability density function, and the CDF, the cumulative distribution function. And I'll just give one more example, a very common example, uh, uh, as well as this uniform one. Another common one, of course, is the Gaussian example. So in the Gaussian example, the PDF of the Gaussian, um, if we had a Gaussian, let's say x was a Gaussian in this case here, f of x, x of x, if it's a Gaussian, you're going to have a, a curve that looks like this, um, a bell-shaped curve, which is symmetric about the mean. I probably haven't really drawn it particularly select. Um, symmetric there. Let me just draw it a bit that way so it's a bit more symmetric there. Uh, so this is a, of course, the Gaussian curve, symmetric about the mean. That's the PDF. And then the CDF uh, of this, I think we can uh, be visualizing that now. The CDF of this is going to uh, be, again, as we say, accumulating this probability as we move from left to right. And so this is a function that is going to be rising like this and flattening off. Of course, uh, it gets to a maximum of one and at uh, halfway, the, the value which has of height half is the median. So this is the definition of the median, which is the uh, value at which the uh, random variable has l l half of them uh, less than this and half of them above this. So this is how you can see uh, use the CDF to find the median. In the case of the Gaussian, because it is symmetric, it also equals the mean. So the median equals the mean when you have a symmetric PDF. So and this, is, this is the case for a Gaussian. Um, so this is, uh, uh, I just want to show this curve here, and to, so you're thinking of the Gaussian as a bell shape, but also in the CDF, it's this smooth uh, ramp uh, shape here, and you can see that as you think about it as you increase uh, the, the, the density and add up to the left of where you are. Of course, one of the applications of a Gaussian, uh, when, well, where it comes up is in digital or communication systems, in particular digital communication systems, where you are, uh, where the Gaussian has zero mean and it is a noise additive to the data, the data symbol being sent. And then you're often wanting to work out the area under the curve uh, to the left of the zero uh, for digital communications. And there's more information on those types of problems on the channel. Uh, then clearly you can see we can use the CDF for that. Uh, and that the CDF is the calculation of the area to the left of the value. Uh, and so we can define a function for the Gaussian, uh, which is a common function, which is called the Q function. And this function is the uh, area, it's the integral from x, it's defined this way, from x to infinity of 
the exponential of u squared divided by 2 with a minus there, uh, du. So this is, a, this is a definition of a standard function which needs to be numerically calculated, but has been numerically calculated, and, and it's a standard function in most programming languages, for example. And so if you want to work out the CDF for a particular value with a particular Gaussian with a particular mean and variance, then fx for the Gaussian, fx equals 1 minus the q function evaluated at x minus mu divided by sigma. So there's a relationship here for the Gaussian. So this is, this is for Gaussians, uh, where the CDF equals a, a 1 minus the q function, where you put the value into the q function uh, here, this value into the q function of x minus mu divided by sigma. So there's a way for easy way to calculate the CDF for a Gaussian. Okay, so if this has been helpful, uh, give the video a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Um, subscribe to the channel for more videos and check out the links in the details below this video for other videos, in particular, the PDF uh, and other videos about expectation and lots of other videos on the channel.